get ready because today I'm going to show you my five step no fail process for editing templates so that they look great every single time. Without fail, the number one thing that I hear from realtors when it comes to editing templates is why can't I make this work? Why is it that every time I try to make a few changes, it ends up looking like Frankenstein's design? So if this sounds like you, if this is like, yes, this is what happens to me every single time, you are in the right place, my friend. So today I'm going to pull back the curtain actually on the camera. Canva Lab, which is my course for realtors teaching them how to use Canva for real estate and show you one of the lessons inside of this course. And it's one of my favorite lessons because it literally breaks down my five step process for editing templates so that they can look good. They can look like you. They can feel on brand every single time. Are you ready? Let's dive in going to edit this template together and also it has all the elements I need to show you my five-step process and while I'm walking you through them I'm gonna be using a real estate brand so inside of the mark collective we have all of these brand kits that are like pre defined brands so inside every brand kit we have these variations and one of them inside this brand kit for the house and co is Eddie Noble so I thought it would be fun if I took his brand and made it work for the Tribeca posts. So step number one is to change the imagery. I always like to start the design with images because images can really influence the other areas of the design. So in order to add our own listing photos for this particular example, we're gonna head to the uploads tab and we're gonna click upload and upload your listing photo. I already have an example listing photo here for Eddie Noble. So all we're gonna do is grab that photo and replace the current image. Now, if you want to move that photo around, we can just double click on that image and we can move it around in the frame. Now, what you'll notice is when any element is highlighted, you'll have a toolbar that is specifically for that particular element. So all you need to do is select the element that you wanna manipulate and the correct corresponding toolbar will pop up. So oftentimes inside the Mark Collective, we have realtors who have a particular brand style and the brand style doesn't necessarily match that modern bright imagery that listings have, right? So on the first slide for their Instagram post or social media post, they might alter the photo slightly so that it matches their brand and then in subsequent slides they'll just let the modern and bright photos speak for themselves what they end up doing is they'll head to this edit tool and what you can do is you can adjust the image in order to match your brand style a little bit better so you can play around with filters there are all these filters here that you can use. So when I click on a filter, you can see that it changes the vibe. It's because the cool thing about filters is you can apply them to all of the photos that you're using in your branding and it creates that cohesive look. Okay, step number two is to change the information. So just listed Tribeca isn't gonna work for many people. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the box and I'm just gonna highlight that and change it to something that is relevant, Toronto. And you can see that that got a little bit wonky. So all I need to do is pull on this rectangle right there in the middle and I can pull it out and adjust the frame size. Step number three is to change the fonts. So now we're going to take Eddie Noble's fonts, our fake brand's fonts, and we're going to add them into the template. Select the text area and where it says the font name, I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select see all. What's really cool about Canva is that if you see these little arrows next to the font, you can click on them and a lot of the fonts that they have will have different weights. So we just select the bold and there we go. So next up, we have to change the colors. So let's head over to Eddie Noble and see what his colors are. When I'm changing colors in any template, I have a rule where it's light for light, dark for dark. I don't mess with the colors. So color for color means this is a light color. So we're gonna go to Eddie Noble and we're gonna select his light color. And in order to see what color this is, we're just going to select the color icon up here in the toolbar. We're gonna click on this plus sign and the hex code will be right here. So all I need to do is copy that hex code. I'm hitting command C on my keyboard. If you're on a PC, I think it's control C. And then I'm going to head back to the Tribeca posts. I'm going to select the background. I'm going to select the background color, click on plus and just paste my hex code into here. Now this is a very similar color. 
So that's kind of cheating. So I might actually show you a different example, but light for light, that worked really well. And we also need to change the color of the text here. So this is a dark color. So we're gonna head to Eddie Noble and we're gonna take his darkest color, do the same thing, select the text box, highlight all the text inside, select text color plus sign and paste. And there we go. And already this looks more Eddie Noble, right? Just by changing that. And then the last step, step number five to edit any template is the elements. So after everything else has changed, that's when we look to the elements and we decide, do we need to add elements? Do we have our own brand elements that need to be added? Do we need to change the logo? Obviously, because this is not Eddie Noble's submark. So we're going to delete that. We're going to head over to Eddie's brand and we are going to find his submark. So this submark is really nice. I think I'm going to use this version. And all I'm going to do is with my mouse, highlight all of the elements, and then I'm going to copy all of these grouped elements, bring it over to my Tribeca post and paste. Now I need to change the color and the color should be the lightest color. So here's a trick. If you don't know what your hex code is and it's already in the design, you can click on the plus sign and then click on this dropper tool and just hover it over the color that you'd like it to be and it will automatically apply it. Very cool. Okay, and this is the perfect opportunity to teach you about locking. So I'm looking at the submark and I'm thinking, ugh, I don't like where it is. I wanna move it down here. But when I try to move it, Canva is moving the element that I'm touching, which is the photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and lock the photo. And that way I can't move it around anymore, which is really helpful because now when I want to take all of these elements and move them slightly into a different position, I can do so without having to tear my hair out trying to figure out how I can move all those elements over. So let's do another one a little bit quicker. Okay, let's do this one. This is a good one. This is the role model. And in the Mark Collective, if you click on the notes tab, for any of our posts, you'll see a content prompt and a, a fill in the blanks caption as well. So in this particular example, in this post, it was to inspire your audience to never give up. So with that context in mind, you can either decide that yes, you wanna carry on with that theme or you can create your own. You like the layout, but your content can be different. So for example, this doesn't need to be a keep going post. You could write just listed here and this could be for your just listed. It could be anything, but let's change it. Let's follow the rules and see if we can change this into something for Eddie Noble. So the first step in our five step blueprint is to change the imagery. So in this area here, we're gonna show a picture of Eddie because that's his brand. So I'm just gonna take this picture, I'm going to copy it and I'm gonna bring it over to our design here and I'm going to paste it. Okay, so now it's not the same size, right? So what do we do? So all we're gonna do is use the tabs up and down, left and right in order to resize it. So I'm gonna grab the side here and just hover it over this background image here and make sure that it aligns, right? Now, remember, all we have to do is double click and move him around in the frame. And now we have a photo under this photo. So what are we gonna do? I'm going to right click and using this layers tab here, I'm going to select send to back. That way I can delete this photo. And now it doesn't look good because he's in the back. So I'm going to do the same thing with this text. A really good trick before we continue on to step number two is to duplicate the template that you're using so you can always reference it as you start to edit. Okay, so step number two is to change the information, change the content. I'm gonna click on the text box and then I'm going to select all the text and just delete it and type in my own saying. So say yes, say yes, say yes. And that looks pretty good. I mean, I would keep it as is, except if you wanna follow the rule of not changing the layout too much, it's not occupying the same space as this one. So what we might wanna do is from the corner, make it occupy the same space or close enough to the same space. I'm gonna keep read the caption because we wanna entice people to read the caption where all of that courageous, inspirational stuff's gonna be. So next we have to change the fonts. So again, I'm gonna select the text box. We're gonna select the font. 
our font is already listed here conveniently. And now you can see that it needs a little bit of refining because it made things a little bit wonky. So I'm just gonna adjust as needed. Okay, and now we're done with the fonts, easy peasy. So next we need to change the color. So I'm just gonna select the text box, head to the text color, and we need to change the background color. And I can't access the background color because my text box is covering it up. So I'm just gonna move that text box out of the way for a second, select the background and change it to his color. And then the last one is to add or remove elements. So in this case, I'm not adding or removing anything. The one thing I might wanna do because this is a post with his image on it is I might maybe, not necessary, but just to show you that we can do it is to add one of his submarks. And there we go. Now. This is hard to read. I can't really read his submark. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to select his image, click on edit, head to adjust, and then reduce the brightness ever so slightly. And now I can read the E N. Now, when you're done with your design and you're ready to post it to Instagram or have it printed or whatever you're designing inside of Canva, you are going to select the share button. And then from here, you're going to select download I'm going to select a PNG file, download. And that is it, my friends. I hope that now you feel a little bit more comfortable editing templates inside of Canva so that they look good every single time. And if you liked this and you want to learn more about how to use Canva for your real estate business, then check out the description below. There is a link to five days to Canva, which is my course that baby steps you through using Canva for your real estate business. I'll speak to you soon, my friends. Happy designing.